Hello and assalamu alaikum everyone. Welcome to another exciting episode of Khabrana Nahi Event Conversations powered by Event Corporate Event Management. We have a very special guest with us here tonight. He's joining us all the way from California. He calls himself a magician, but I feel that there's a lot more he's got up his sleeve than just that. Recently due to COVID, he shifted his entire model to virtual ex- to creating virtual experiences and the experiences are absolutely mind blowing so let's call him on and we would love to know so much more about the world of magic that he has created around himself and the magic through which he entertains everybody so please call on and give a very warm welcome to none other than Dennis Kariako Hi, hello. Hi, Dennis. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for coming. It's an absolute pleasure to have you. It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for uh, thanks for inviting me. Absolutely. I hope we didn't wake you up too early in the morning <laughs> to come up for the show. <laughs> no, I'm good. I, I have I need more coffee though, but I'll be okay. Right. Don't worry. <laughs> as, you, as you talk, you know, we're very casual here, so it won't be a problem. <laughs> okay, great, great, great. All nice right, to see you. Dennis. Absolutely. All right. So we're going to jump in right into the conversation because we don't want everybody who is so excited for this show. We won't we don't want them to wait anymore. So we want to start off by getting to know more about you and your story and how you came into this field and what more is there to the stereotypical definition of being a magician? What more do you think more of an experience do you think that they, that this is so do tell us about your journey and your story and how you have come to where you are today wow that's that's actually a big question that section at the end about the more to this i really <laughs> like that that's really good wow that's a great first question so uh i i remember when i was about 10 years old i would watch there was a magic show on television here in the states uh, it was uh, the magician was uh, a gentleman named Mark Wilson, and he, mm-hmm. him, and his wife and his son, who I think was about the same age as me, would have this show on Saturday mornings. And I would wake up in the morning and sneak downstairs very early and watch the. And I was just glued to the television watching the show. And I, I re- all remember saying, "I want to do that. That's what I want to do." And. Um, Around the same time uh, in my school, in the fo- well, I was in the fourth grade at the time, uh, I don't know what it's like there in Pakistan, but they would offer the kids like uh, uh, books that you can buy, you know, and they would ship them to the class. And they had a magic book in there and I still have it on my shelf since I was, you know, since the fourth grade. And I got the book and I remember reading it and being so disappointed because there was no magic in it. It was just tricks. I had to like learn how to do and make things out of, you know, make a hat and, you know, make a cape for the magician. And, but still there was something about the feeling that I had watching a magician perform this a feeling of astonishment and of wonder, which, uh, you know, as a child, you live in that world, but as an adult, as an adult, that's something that we need more, more and more of, you know, we, we need to still experience that as adults. And I remember growing up and learning about magic and practicing. And um, I remember the feeling of wanting to be able to create that feeling for someone else. Does that make sense? To be Absolutely. able to, to, be able to yeah. give that feeling to someone else was a really drive, really drove me quite a bit yeah Yeah. and that's wonderful and that's what exactly what I was talking about that there's a lot more to it than just doing and knowing a couple of tricks you know it's it's more deep and more meaningful the kind of feeling that you want in other to create in that experience and in other people so that's absolutely that answers my question really well so in times of of COVID uh, I know we were having this discussion backstage as well how difficult was it for you? Because I believe that you had, uh, before COVID, you had been doing all of these experiences uh, in a physical environment with people in front of you and having an audience in front of you and you know being face to face, being able to interact more effectively. So how difficult was it for you when COVID hit 
to change that entire model and uh, create more virtual and digital experiences? What are some of the challenges that you may you may have faced during this entire shift? Yeah. So yeah, before COVID, I was performing. Uh, I've been performing professionally for probably close to twenty five years now. Uh, I'm originally. I'm originally. Yeah, like full time. That's been my job. And before that, I was performing uh, on the on the weekends, and you know, as a semi professional, and making extra money that way because I loved what I was doing. I loved it; it was a passion, and I, you know, I still enjoy it. So um, I moved. I was originally from New York City, and I moved to uh, California in 2012 with nothing. I had no prospects. I had no connections here. And it took about five years to rebuild my business here. And in New York, I was doing in New York, I was doing more private events, higher end mm -hmm. private events. And then when I moved here, I started seeing that there was more corporate events to do here, like mm -hmm. uh, trade trade shows and conferences and other types of cor corporate events. So suddenly now we find ourselves in this situation where we can't be together live. And the first thing that I realized was if I if I get scared of this, it's not mm -hmm. going to work. If there's any fear involved in doing this, it's just not going to work. So I was lucky enough that at the time and still I'm involved in a uh, a, a uh, a club, uh, a private club, a members only club in San Francisco. And I worked with them live doing magic, you know, for the guests. And about a week after they, maybe two weeks after they shut down, they called me and said, hey, we want to do a virtual happy hour. Can you do it? And I didn't know if I could do it or not, but I said, yes, yeah. I can do it. And I'm going to do it. And I'll figure it out. Yeah, so we did we did a number of them every week. We did about seven or eight of them every week, and I did all of them on my cell phone. I put my wow. cell phone on a yeah, I put my cell phone on a tripod and I showed up at the time and the guests came in and I would perform magic on my cell phone. And then I started thinking, well, I want to start doing some other things. I wonder if there's technology for this. And I was in, mm -hmm. I'm involved in some other groups and uh uh, started to poke around and discovered some technology that I can use. You know, I, I uh, did research on what kind of lighting I would need, you know, making a small set back here, you know, and populating it. And, and then started to think about the actual performance because it has to be a little bit different than yes. it would be live. So yes. how, do I, how do I engage you through this screen and make it feel like you're sitting right here in the room with me. And that's, exactly. that's the goal that I'm trying to create. So exactly. there's a lot, there's a lot of things that have to, uh, you have to consider to create that experience. And I'm still learning. I feel like I have a good sense of it, but I'm still mm -hmm. always kind of learning. So it is, cause this is really brand new. So. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think yeah. uh, for, any any kind of field i think it's very very important for you to as you said and as the title of our show again says that you can't panic and you can't freak out just because a little uh change comes your way you know a little challenge comes your way you need to have that mindset to go through it and i think you've done a terrific job at you know creating some virtual experiences so let me ask you this have you received the same kind of response because we know over here when we, we've also uh, introduced another digital model to events, uh, creating event experiences and everything. Uh, but I feel like people are still a little more uh, resistant to, to adapting to this kind of a model because obviously it's something that's new to everybody. It's not, it's the new normal. It's not something that's very common. So have you faced any challenges in, in your audience uh, uh, accepting this model or were you, were they comfortable or, how did you maneuver your way through that, you know, making sure that they were, you know, this is this is the real thing. Yeah, that's that's a good question. You know, when when I I realized uh, this early on, when we all this all started happening and paying attention to the news and paying attention to all of that, as we, we all went through this together, I realized very quickly that 
uh, you know, a lot of people are scared, right? They're fearful, obviously. And as I was starting to develop this, I, I realized, you know, I was getting a lot of what I was getting a lot of, or like a lot of solicitations from companies on, that I'm on their mailing list and they're saying, hey, you know, here's our sale for COVID. I'm like, that doesn't feel right. That doesn't feel right. And what, what was missing from a lot of that was a human connection right yeah so what i first thing i did was i emailed my very core mailing list and i all i did was say to them how are you are you okay <laughs> is your family okay yeah. yeah and i i asked for nothing i asked mm -hmm. for nothing i'm just checking in to see how you are mm -hmm. and i got an incredible response from that and that gave me the clue and that people really, really at this time want a more of a human to human connection. And yes. again, it fed into designing the, this performance and this whole experience from my end to see if I can make that, uh, to give that to people. And as I was kind of putting it out there and starting to do performances, I was getting that feedback from people uh, and seeing it on the screen as I'm watching, as I'm participating in it myself, that people are really like wanting this human connection. Yeah. They want to have that experience of wonder and laughter and be together, even though we can't physically, can I bring that to them as best I can through this medium, through this uh, venue, so. Absolutely, okay. and that is wonderful. Some wonderful insights that we're getting from Dennis. And uh, Dennis, on that note, that wonderful note, we will now move on to our rapid fire round. Are you oh, ready okay. to be rapid and answer some questions for us? Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Let's do it. I, I wish I, I wish I had more coffee, but that's okay. Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> that's okay. They won't be that tough. So, okay. if we could have our questions up on the screen, please. All right. Okay. So the first question is one talent or skill of yours that not many people know of. Oh gosh. One talent that not too many people know of, you know, I, I have, I have a third degree black belt in Aikido. I don't Ooh. talk about it very much. I still practice. I still train, uh, you know, even virtually we have a virtual dojo that, uh, you know, our sensei and our, the community has created. So, uh, I don't talk about it very much, but it's cause it's a very personal thing for me, but, uh, there you go. That's a skill. Is it talent skill? I don't know. <laughs> All right. Okay. With that, let's move on to the next question. Any memory of an oversight that you made during a magic act? Uh, of an oversight? No, never. I, my shows are perfect. There's never anything wrong with them. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't have anything specific. I don't have anything really specific, but I know, I oh gosh, I know for a fact that I have at times forgotten to prepare a prop and forgotten maybe the uh, a line that I might say or, or um, yeah, I know, I can't think of anything specific, but I know it happens and it could happen today and okay. it could happen tomorrow. It could happen anytime. That's the excitement about doing a live performance. Yeah, uh, I don't have anything specific, right. but it's happened. <laughs> All right, okay, moving on to the next question, please. What is the first thing that you notice about a person when you meet them for the first time? Oh, wow. Uh, if I meet them live, the first thing that I be uh, aware of, two things. First, their smile and how they mm -hmm. present themselves when they come forward. And second, if I shake their hands, I notice their hands. There's something okay. about someone, uh, their hand that, uh, that whether they have a very rough hand or smooth hand, it tells you a lot. And when I shake okay. people, someone's hand, uh, I, so it's something that I, I, I'm drawn to because maybe because I work with my hands a lot. So with the magic, so. Absolutely. Okay. Next question, please. What is my, what is your most annoying <laughs> habit? <laughs> Uh, probably that I probably that I stay up too late and watch too many Netflix and uh, Amazon Prime. I think right now, I need to cut that out. There's too many. Cut, cut too much, too much. All right. <laughs> okay. 
you and half the world doing the same thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe All maybe right. we can be accountable. We can account be accountable for each other and help each other out. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Next question, please. Do you think black magic is real? Oh, blah, wow. Uh, that's a good question. I no, I don't think that uh, black. Well, what did you have to define black magic here? If you're saying saying it's being able to put a spell on someone, is that what mm -hmm. you're thinking? Ah, mm -hmm. interesting. Okay. Uh, n no, I don't think it is. I think that mm -hmm. we are. I think personally, each of us are can and do control our destiny, and mm -hmm. we can we can set that path. And so I, I don't believe that black magic is real. No, I don't think that anyone has control over you in that way. The other person, absolutely. All right, okay, next question, please. What is the hardest magic trick to do? Uh, wow, I guess that depends on who you're talking to. You know, this is interesting because one of the reasons I got into magic was because I found it so difficult and challenging mm -hmm. to learn. So I actually, I tend to gravitate to, towards things that are difficult and uh, that require a lot of practice and require a lot of sleight of hand. So there are some things in my, in, that I perform that are more challenging there than others. Um, I can show you something that can be a little challenging in a little while. Uh, All right, so there's, I did for that part. <laughs> There's always something. There's always something that I do that has a little bit of a risk in some way. Okay. So I'm not. I'm not afraid of that. I hope I'm safe. So. <laughs> I hope I'm safe <laughs> the All right. Okay. Next question, please. What is the strangest thing that you may have read in someone's mind? Oh wow. Uh, <laughs> oh gosh. Uh, <laughs> These are really good questions. Wow. Uh, yes, I have a. I do some mind reading in my show, and I had one woman uh, in the show. This is the first thing that popped into my head. Uh, she, she, uh, I told her what kind of tattoo she had on her on her body, and uh -huh. this was near the near the end of the show. And it's not so much the strangest thing that I read in her mind, but what she did was. Uh, she started taking off her blouse to show everyone oh and she took her shirt down to show everyone. And we were like, Oh my goodness. So, okay. uh, uh, they had a little, maybe it was, you know, there was some alcohol involved. I know. So yeah, uh, probably, they were a little probably, loose. That's probably the reason why. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. Next question, please. Have you ever wanted a client to disappear? <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I have had a, uh, most of my clients are, uh, thank goodness, are fantastic. But, uh, you know, there's always one or two that can be a little challenging that you need to hold their hand with, you know, you need to hold their hand on. And uh, so, uh, no, I'm grateful for my clients and to have the work I, I get when it comes. And, but there are some that are a little more challenging that take a little more work. Uh, I'll just leave it at that. I'll I'll just leave leave it at that. that. All right. <laughs> All right. Okay. Let's move on to the next question, please. If you could make anything appear under the tissue that I was supposed to be holding, but I forgot, ah. I said, what would it be? Imagine this uh, is the tissue. I'll let it go. If you could make anything appear under it, what would it be? Uh, oh gosh! Wow. Uh, I would make first. I would make the tissue appear if I could really do that. <laughs> first step would be that. <laughs> Absolutely. And then, uh, and then I probably would make a a deck, a pack of playing cards appear, so we could do some magic together. How does that sound? All right. That sounds great. Wonderful. All right. If only I hadn't forgotten that tissue. <laughs> Ah, uh, these things, live show business. This is live show business. Absolutely. All right, let's move on to the next question, please. All right, so this marks the end of our rapid fire and it, this particular statement represents the title of our show, which as I explained and translated, you have to complete this sentence for us, that you shouldn't panic or worry because, and I will say it in Urdu as well, 
घबराना नहीं क्योंकि So you shouldn't you shouldn't panic and you shouldn't worry because you shouldn't panic and you shouldn't worry because you will not be able to move forward if you do. Absolutely. And I think very that's simple. Very simple and very simple. You won't be able to join to enjoy the present moment. And this is all we have is the present moment. So Absolutely. Wonderful. Wonderful. And our rapid fire has ended on a beautiful, beautiful, positive thought. And <laughs> with that, we're going to take now a couple of comments from our audience, comments and questions. Oh, so the first question up is by Zafina, who says, with your extraordinary mind reading abilities, would you be able to help an intelligence agency to resolve a case? Okay. Interesting. Wow. Interesting. You know, I know of some people who might be able to do that. However, uh, and I hope I don't disappoint anybody, but these extraordinary mind reading abilities I have, I only have on TV like this. I only have, I don't have them in real life. I'm only playing the part of a magician. So uh, I would not, I would not presume that I would be able to uh, read uh, really read anyone's minds but in the right circumstances it could feel that way mm -hmm. so uh hopefully that answers the question absolutely zafina as dennis said hopefully that answers the question all right we have another question by ina uh, and also reveals another field that you have been a part of as a film theater actor and director do different ethnic backgrounds attract you to create a um, create multicultural content oh wow different ethnic backgrounds attract to create to uh interesting uh you know that's interesting i this is like my this is only my second time believe it or not mm -hmm. that i've done anything internationally this way with uh, uh dealing with a different culture one time a couple of years ago i was in shanghai for uh, a trade show and that was a really interesting experience to just be there for, i was there for like a week and to uh um, just immerse myself in that way. I really, I never felt like an out, so much of an outsider than I did when going to Shanghai. So do different ethnic backgrounds, multicultural contact. That's interesting. I mean, I'm always curious about different mm -hmm. cultures and, and to, to figure out what makes, what makes you tick that's different from me. So I don't mm -hmm. look at it as creating content. I just more of a human experience and a human connection. And perhaps learning about that, you know, your culture helps me in some way grow or in some way to be able to uh, to um, have a relationship with you in this situation, if that if that Absolutely. makes sense. Yeah. Absolutely. It makes absolute sense. Thank you, Ina, for your questions. Uh, okay, I think that's that's it for the questions. Dennis, now I feel like, okay, Adina's already saying, please show us some magic. So <laughs> without any further delay, I think we'll go to the, right. the much-awaited part of this show. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, all of our viewers who are watching, we present to you the one and only Dennis Kiriakos <laughs> doing, his, doing what he does best. Well, all right. Well, yeah. Let's see how that goes. Let's see how that goes. So, uh, Rafia, have you ever been to? Have you ever been to the United States? Have you been to the states? Yes. Yes, I've been. You to have. States. Have you ever been to Las Vegas? No, I've only been to Texas. No other Texas. state. Okay. okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, Just in Las Vegas. I spend. I spend. I used to spend quite a bit of time in Las Vegas over the past few years working at conventions and things. And Las Vegas, you know, they play a lot of cards. Oh and yeah, so uh, I discovered, you know, there are things that, such things as marked cards where people mm -hmm. used to cheat at cards. Well, this is a deck of marked cards, believe it or not. It's a deck of marked okay. cards. It's, it says so right there on the back. So <laughs> it must be true. It must be true. It All must right. be true. Now I need to yeah. show you this. Uh, okay. You need to see, normally they put the markings on the backs of the playing cards, okay? Mm -hmm. These are a little different. These are known as edge marked cards, which means, I don't know if you can see that, these oh. markings, 
They're yeah. on the side. They're on the side of the deck. Now, you can't tell what that says right now. I'll explain that in a few moments. But what okay. I need to show you is that the cards are all mixed. I'll show you they are all mixed. They are all different, okay? It's not the mm -hmm. same card over and over again. It's a regular deck yeah. of cards. And yeah. uh, Rafia, I'm gonna ask you to choose a card. So I'm gonna drop the cards like this. And mm -hmm. somewhere somewhere in the middle, I'd like you to say stop. And I'll stop okay. right when you tell me, okay? Just say stop. Stop. Let's try that again because I didn't get it till the end. One more time. Somewhere just say stop. Stop. Right there? Okay. So uh, I'm going to turn my head and I'm going to show you the card. Hopefully everybody can see that. Uh, don't, okay. don't tell me what the card is. Do not write it in the chat. That's very important. Okay. And I'm going to put the cards back like this. Now, normally I would shuffle the cards, but I'm not going to do this. For you okay. and for everyone watching, I'm going to do exactly the opposite. And I'm going to unshuffle these cards. Yes, unshuffle the cards. It looks like this. I'm going to divide the deck exactly in half. 26 mm -hmm. cards and 26 cards. And I'm going to weave those cards together perfectly like this. Let's try that again. Hang on. I still haven't had a coffee. There it is right there. <laughs> and when you when you unshuffle those cards, something special happens to the, <clears throat> to the marks on the side. Can you see that? It now says Eveniment <laughs> four times on the side of the deck. Oh That's my right. <laughs> a 360 degree event management solutions company dedicated to providing each client with an unforgettable experience. I'll do that again one more time. There's more, there's more. There's more, watch, you just unshuffle the cards like this, perfectly weaving the cards together and when you unshuffle them, it now says Eveniment twice on the side of the deck. Great service unmatched value and a strong team coming together to create extraordinary corporate events. We'll do that one more time. Yes, One more time. Watch close. I unshuffle the cards again. And now lo and behold, Eveniment appears in big bold letters on the side of the deck. Pretty cool, right? But wait. Oh my God. There's more, there's more, there's more. You remember now two things happen. Two things happen when you unshuffle the cards. One, the solution to your problems becomes clear right there, in big bold letters. Yeah. And two, I have literally unshuffled the cards. Do you remember I showed you the cards were all mixed when we began? Do you remember that part? Yeah. Now yeah. look, they are completely in perfect order. Take a look, there's the ace of hearts followed by the two the three, the four, and the five. In fact, all of the hearts are now in order. All of the clubs are in order. No all order. of the diamonds oh, and all God. of the spades in perfect order the way they come from the factory. That uh, is wait. brilliant. Oh, there's more? One, more? one more thing, one more thing, because you selected a card. Do you remember you chose a card? Yeah, I think what, I've forgotten what? it in this excitement. <laughs> What was the no, card no, that you chose? What was the card? Should I say it out? It was the eight of hearts. It was the eight of hearts. Ooh. Can we please unmute Dennis so that everybody can hear him? There we go. Now I'm unmuted. What was your card? It was the eight of hearts. The eight of hearts. Watch the marks one more time on the side of the deck as we unshuffle them to reveal exactly your card, the eight of hearts. Oh, <laughs> oh my goodness. That is brilliant, Dennis. Oh my God. Thank you very much. Absolutely brilliant. You know, the crowd is going crazy right now. You just can't hear the applause, but I can feel it. <laughs> oh, good. That is brilliant. That is Ladies and gentlemen, and for all of our viewers who are watching, that was a brilliant, brilliant trick done by Dennis Kariakos. It was not just a card trick, guys. There was a little bit extra that was thrown in there by Dennis, and it was an absolute pleasure, Dennis, to have you here on our show and tell us all about your journey and also make us experience a little bit of what you do in the most brilliant brilliant way so thank you so much for giving us time and for being on our show it was a pleasure having you my pleasure thank you very much for the invitation i appreciate it 
All right, well, let's stay in touch, Dennis, and you know, keep doing great things together. Thank you so much for coming once again. I would love. All right, viewers, with that, we come to the end of our show. I think that is one of the most brilliant shows that we've ever had. The magic tricks have, you know, I, I'm still coming back to uh, myself. It was brilliant, brilliant work done by Dennis. For any reason you weren't able to see our live show, please do catch us on our YouTube channel, which is Eventum in Pakistan. Um, do subscribe, do like our videos. You can see today's videos and the previous ones as well. Uh, we have a lot more coming up for you. So keep watching and stay with us. And from my side, thank you. Good night.